the Karate Kid 2010 whistles in the works the drama flying swords of Dragon Gate, fists and feed fly as enemy combatants form and break alliances and backbones. The major innovation, in this case, is the 3D format, but make no mistake, this is a throwback. While action legend Sui Hark's latest whizzes and whirs with a dazzling side of martial arts brawls happening in your lap, many accented by elaborate CG effects, flying swords is most assuredly a product of its genre, with characters taking flight, projectiles being fired, and romances curled up into twisted knots. Those who saw Hark's latest, Detective D in the Mystery of the Phantom Flame, noted that it was frenetic and overplotted, if still an absolute delight. However, Phantom Flame is as simple as Ovid to compare to Dragon Gate, which heaps on the double and triple crosses. Jet Li, showing his age and face if not in style, is one of three bandits who, in the first scene, take down a tyrannical despot in a dashing explosion of the art form. Swords clang, heads are kicked through scaffolding, and our heroes reign through a muddy reflection on religious trauma. The plot from this point is incidental. A female warrior protects a terrorized pregnant woman who comes from royalty, posing as one of Lee's bandits. The chase, which also involves a schmucky, a and prince and a duo of former lovers, find themselves at an inn in the middle of the desert during a sandstorm. Despite few of these characters wearing masks, infrequently, everyone's identity is a puzzle box, continually unfolding to reveal frayed relationships, damaged egos and con seemingly subterranean clan that already inhabits the sin, however, are in the perfect position to stage a power play. Speaking in an unrecognizable dialect, these rugged warriors, clothed in bare skin and dotted with tribal tattoos, seek to spoil the tension that's radiating between all involved parties. It's all a bunch of melodramatically, of course, but when the lithe, seductive female clan leader starts threatening the manhood of those around her, it's as if a looser, more improvised film has crashed into this mannered period piece. As if on cue, these warriors are also have multiple identities and ulterior motives, it's less of a surprise, really, and more of an expectation at that point. Flying Swords concludes during a violent sandstorm, a chance for the film to utilize 3D to pay homage to Wizard of Oz, both in the sense of fantastical adventure and the idea of those in power being false idols. By the film's close, the royals involved in the plot all have committed their own peccadillas, all guilty of some key plot element obscured by wrongdoing. Hark has built his career on towing the line between nationalist cinema and irreverence, and in his accelerated age that line has proudly been crossed, even if the fair itself remains goofily escapist. Dragon Gate, of course, is less interested in politics and more consumed in the gnarly back and forth between flying combatants, particularly in the climax. As the sandstorm rages on, a development that yields the sudden third act reveal of hidden golden fate, pregnancies, amongst a shrink tossing few that launches straight towards the audience. Silly, distracting, and undeniably 